I think I'm on. I think I've started. I think that's me. Uh, yes, it is. Excellent connection. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm on. Uh, I've got to get my notes up. Oh, and let's go to GarageBand. I've got to make sure that that's up as well. Um, and then I've got to, okay, so I've got GarageBand. I've got my notes here. And we've got a lot to go over today, Thursday. Hoofa. Um, okay. Yeah. I woke up and I didn't have that much to go over, but now I've got a crazy amount to go over. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to, let's move this up so I'm not in the way. Uh, there we go. We'll just put this up here. I just threw a picture under there, the title, so you can see um, what that, that looks a little better. I'm kind of talking into the Blue Yeti here. And I'm not going to pause this one like I normally do. Um, we're just going to kind of go straight. So I need to leave that there. Um, okay. And with that, now that I see it, I am going to start recording. Good morning. It's Thursday, September 1st. We're live on YouTube. Uh, I figured out the screen share. Uh, so if you want to watch, um, you can tune in live. I'll have it recorded as well. Uh, I've got some screen issues where I'm still kind of working things out. Um, but you'll see me kind of work through this, if you will. Um, we're going to try and keep it to an hour, but I've got a lot. The first thing I want to talk about, and the most horrific uh, use of power I've ever seen, um, NVIDIA sale. Uh, the U.S. government today restricted NVIDIA and AMD from exporting certain chips to China for military purposes. And that's, you know, listen, it's national security. I get it. Here's my problem. Nancy Pelosi's husband, insider Pelosi Tracker.com, whatever you want to look up at. I posted this on my Instagram stories. Um, remember that trade that he did strangely with a, um, he got in and then strangely got out. Was this in the works at that time? Because he got out with a loss. Uh, and everybody was like, hmm, boy, that seems very unlike him. Uh, between now and the time when he sold, he would have lost millions of dollars. So did he know that this was in the works? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, NVIDIA. Let's look at NVIDIA. I'm going to pull it up on the chart here. Um, our algorithm. Uh, you can see... So here's the algorithm, and everybody's been asking, well, you know, what does the algorithm look like, blah, blah, blah. Notice it's got entries and exits. This exits right here. The red exits are losses. The green are made um, profits. So there is this one at 188. The algorithm would have gotten you in. It would have gotten you out pretty quickly. Um, see that sell right there. Here's the issue with NVIDIA, and, and probably one of the reasons why he – he sold it's just it's a falling knife you can see this bounce up here for a nice 12 percent gain by the way um if you got that 12 percent gain fantastic i doubt that you would have gotten out because who knew that all of this was coming although hindsight is 2020 it's pretty obvious it was coming because we ran up too far too quickly uh but uh, this volume shelf that you want to pull back here to the highs. I, I'm, I've been pulling it back to the beginning of January here. You can clearly see there is a volume shelf here at about 190. Uh, right now, we broke below the volume shelf. 147 is kind of where, P, again, it's only going to trade as low as it is. What the volume shelf means is from this time, January 4th, until today, People who are holding the stock 
what price did they pay? You can see there are clearly some people up here in the 240s, 250s that bought during the March uh, run-up, um, and they're still holding. You can clearly see that 190 is the largest volume shelf. Um, then you go down to 177. That's how to read these volume shelves, and you can see right here in a light shade, that is where um, the, the, the amount of shares that are held at that price level. So, and you saw, just saw this move because it just added a candle because it's 9.30 and we just opened up. I'm, I'm kind of doing this one late. Um, again, I've got a ton of notes. But <clears throat> NVIDIA, you'd be out. The uh, catalyst is this ex-dividend date on September 6th. Your RSI is at 24. There is no reason to get in this right now. <clears throat> I have no doubt in my mind. I'm going to take a sip of water. <clears throat> With recording on YouTube, I can't really pause the podcast and edit it, but um, yeah, God, uh, if you can see my screen, that's my portfolio, all the red. Uh, again, remember, you know, and, and, and I'm, I think I mentioned this on Instagram to a couple of people yesterday, um, up until the last five minutes, I was actually green, and then the last five, ten minutes, there was a huge sell-off yesterday. Um so, and you can see right here, this little green candle, uh, if we zoom in a little bit, that little green candle is today's. So it opened down, and the reason it's green is because it's up from where it opened. Simple as that. Might go red. It's at 142.96 right now. <clears throat> I don't own NVIDIA, but see these volume shelves right here? There's no support below this. Uh, you're probably going to see a big volume uh, day today in NVIDIA, the RSI is at 24. It can go down further. Uh, if we go over here and we go to NVIDIA, uh, and this is Finviz, what I'm on, and I might refer to over here, blah, blah, blah. I just have to remember that I'm screen, I'm screen recording and recording a podcast. Uh, but you can see August 8th, a downgrade with a price target of 180. Uh, what I wanted to show you is the Forward PE is 32. PE is 49. And remember, if you hover over these, you can find out exactly what they are. And if you click on them, uh, it has more information. But let's go to AMD because that's their main competitor. 17 and 35 for PE and forward PE. So NVIDIA still has a ways to come down just based on their, their earnings. Uh, and again, if this this, um, hey, you're not allowed to sell in China is bigger than we expect, you could significantly see a, a roll down. And look at all of the uh, articles that are on there about NVIDIA. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not good. It's not good at all. Um, I'm going to go up here. Um, okay, just part of my notes. We're in a bear, bear, the July, August bounce was a bear rally bounce. Uh, let's look at SPY and we'll pull up SPY. And what I'm going to show you is uh, the SPY and I'm not going to do the algorithm. I'm going to go to a daily. Uh, and if we go to a daily uh, on the SPY, you can clearly see that that bounce there. Uh, we had a gap here between 413 and 416 that was filled. You have a gap here between 389 and 383. Again, this is SPY, and it's a daily. Technicians will tell you that that gap is most likely going to get filled. This is your June low, and you can see clearly within the past couple of years that it's a low. Now, uh, you could pull it back here to May of 2020. It doesn't want to go back. I'd have to go to a weekly. Uh, we're still not even close. Um, I'm sorry. I've got to uh, pull that on. I'm going to actually, I'm not going to pause it. Screw it. It's my mother calling. Um, compare it to, if so if you see this bounce here, I, sorry, I got screwed up. I do have it on do not disturb. So she should be able to see that. Um, you can see 360 bounce right here. That's where the S&P was. Uh, it got down to 362. Uh, that's a low for the recent term. Do I think that we're going down there? I don't think so. When I pull it back here, and I will pull it back to, 
um, September. Let's just pull it back to kind of. You can see this is September 2020, and you can see clearly that September is just not a good month. Uh, here's September 2021. This is September 2020. Clearly, we may be going into one of those September bottoms. And you, you know, a lot of people have said, "Hey, we're going to get back down to 370, 360 on the spy." Um, you can clearly see that bounce off the 200 day right there. And that's what technicians are talking about. You can see this MACD down here. Clearly it's crossing down. You are in an oversold position or at least getting there. Uh, this volume shelf here at 396 was kind of broken. Not quite. But again, we pulled this way back right here. Uh, so 397 was the volume shelf. Uh, when you get to the bottom here at 390, that's where technicians are talking about uh, this one clearly going down to. Now, does it bounce off that or does it go down even further? I don't know. It's got some support down here uh, around 365. You can clearly see that that was, it, it broke through it, but it bounced right back up in the same candle. And that's a daily candle. So you can assume that the bottom broke it, but it closed higher because it's green. So it didn't quite close below that. So sorry about the interruption there. I wanted to make sure if you're looking on uh, on YouTube and if you're listening in your car and you can't look at, um, go to YouTube and I, I don't know how many minutes in, look at how many minutes in you're on your podcast and just add a couple of minutes. That's where you can kind of see this daily spy chart. Um, it's a great, great look at what technicians are talking about and why they're saying 390 may be a bounce up, but also you could go back down to the June lows. So uh, they're not expecting us to go lower, uh, but they don't know catalysts. Uh, again, forward looking, you just don't know what the catalysts are. All this does is look at technical uh, mathematicians. And, and again, kind of to bring, well, let me bring this up. There was a, um, a legendary investor on this morning, David Rubenstein, who uh, started the Carlisle Group in Washington, which is a, a fantastic, uh, legendary um, investment group. And he's got a new book coming out called How to Invest uh, the Masters of the Craft, where he interviews seven or eight just masters uh, investors. And he was asked, okay, what makes a great investor? Uh, he said it's a person who likes to read, uh, a person who's excellent at math, and a person who goes against conventional wisdom. Uh, and what he was talking about with conventional wisdom is like Michael Burry um, going against uh, the the you know finding out the housing crisis, and um, you know even Roaring Kitty with GME, which he didn't he didn't interview because Roaring Kitty is not a um, legendary investor, but. <clears throat> what Roaring Kitty Roaring Kitty understands math, and he also did his research. He understood that GameStop was oversold, and likely there were more sales of uh, stock short than there were actual shares. If that's the case, and you get enough behind, then the short sellers can't buy the stock back. So essentially, it's a supply and demand issue, just like the market has. Uh, and, and so that's what he's talking about going against the grain. I, I thought it was interesting. I might read the book. Uh, I'm not a big reader, so who knows? Um, Jim Cramer was on this morning, by the way, the NVIDIA stuff. Uh, he's just ridiculous. Um, his investment club is essentially like a private discord group. Make no mistake about it. He is no different than the people he is yelling about. If you want to see, uh, him get put in his place, go on comedy central, just Google Jim Cramer, uh, John Stewart interview, and you'll find it on, uh, comedy central, but, uh, his investment club is not worth it. If, if this year, you would have made more money with the inverse Jim Cramer than you would have with buying Jim Cramer's uh, stock. And I don't want to tell you that I've made money this year. I've lost money. And, and it's the simple fact of uh, Jim Cramer's uh, uh, nonprofit charitable trust is the same thing where you just hold stocks for a long time. And more than likely, they are lower this year 
Um, they're not lower in your purchase price, but they're lower from where they were in January. So you've still made money. You just have lost money from the beginning of the year. And most likely, a lot of the investments that you've bought throughout this year, if you've held them, you've lost money. That's why I want you to take profits in this in this market. Again, if you're looking at my screen, look at the SPY. It makes no sense that if you bought in January, say you bought the January dip on January 28th. If you bought that dip and held, you wouldn't have made any money. If you would have bought the June dip and held, you may not have made any money. So you've got to take your uh, your profits in this market. Um, let's look at, so Jackson wrote me on Instagram. I'll just kind of go down my notes from here. Uh, he has a stock pick and it's Party City. Uh, and I'm going to read you his message to me uh, and then I'll, I'll kind of go over it a little bit. So the stock is Party City. He says it, um, it's getting a lot of social media attention. It has had a lot of social media attention. Um, I've traded this one, I think, three or four times over the past probably two years. Um, it's not a short squeak. It is actually absolutely not a short squeeze. And I will look just in, I'm an active trader pro right now. For those go, those of you guys who have um, Robinhood, you shouldn't be using the charts in Robinhood. You can use them on your phone every now and then. It's great. But Active Trader Pro is a live trading platform that gives you charts. And this is a fantastic tr uh, trading platform. Right here in Active Trader Pro in the trading window, I can see that Party City is only 8.32% short. And that's because it's a dollar stock and it is traded down. Um, so he's right. It's not short. Uh, the case for this stock is that it's been unfairly beaten down. The company actually makes money. Let's go to Finviz. I will look at Finviz and let's go to PRTY, Party City. Uh, they are making money. See that green, $2.02 .02 on the forward earnings? Yeah, they're making money. They are down 64% this year. Uh, so they are making money. With Halloween around the corner, my hypothesis is this one will run up. If nothing else, I believe it could be a good short-term trade. Looking at the technicals and trend spider, it seems to be in a recent upward trend and should continue to see higher highs uh, and higher lows. The MACD just crossed down, but the 20-day simple moving average just crossed the 50-day. Jackson has great technical uh, observations here. So let's go to PRTY, and I will pull it up in my algorithm and show you the algorithm shows it it's got this gap and this is what i was telling jackson yesterday is this gap here between 196 and 294 it's been partially filled and you can see trend spider starts to fill that in as the gap gets there now it's down at 196 right now the gap goes all the way up to about it looks like three dollars just say three dollars um, and that was on the last earnings back in May that it dropped down. They lost 22 cents per share. This quarter, they made 10 cents per share. And that's what's been the catalyst from this one all the way from a dollar up to $2. It got all the way up here to $2 and 60 something cents. Um, but uh, I, again, I, I don't disagree with his uh, his analysis here. It did just cross down. You guys can see the algorithm has you in this trade at $1.18 uh, before the earnings. As you're going down, this is the button hook that I've talked about in my algorithm that most stocks see on these kind of run-ups. And the August run-up has been exactly perfect on this. So um, with the RSI at 52, if I come over here and you look on the left here, look at that number where my cursor is and I come over here to today's, the RSI is at 52. So it is in no man's land. And you can see simply as the RSI has come down, the stock has come down, and these moving day averages, the nine and the 21 here, are coming closer. The algorithm doesn't have you out yet. What I'm worried about here is this volume shelf. And let's pull the volume shelf in here. Um, and I'm gonna pull it here since the gap. And the volume shelf that you see in this gap, clearly, there is a lot more people holding at $1.46 than anywhere else. That means the rug could be pulled out of you if this gets some type of catalyst move down. 
Say, for instance, um, the market just gets pulled down huge. There's some type of um, a- event. Who knows? Now, Party City, again, like Jackson said, it's got um, Halloween in the bag to say. Uh, typically, a stock will try and cover this gap. This volume shelf right here at $2 is building. If it can hold that volume shelf here, then it's going to create a floor at $2. And that's just technic- t- technical kind of trading. So it's going to build that $2 shelf. If it builds that $2 shelf, I think you could fill this gap to 3 30% move. Um, now, if I look at this, this is where I pulled up in Fidelity, their competitors. And you look at their price performance 52 weeks. None of these guys are doing well. Um, they are supposedly in specialty retail. Um, and I am going to just turn this to silent because I don't want you bothering me. Um, I have it on silent. I don't know why it's ringing. I'm on do not disturb. Um, so you can see this specialty retail right here. Uh, industry average. The uh, PE uh, for Party City, 24. The industry average is 15. Uh, Ollie's, which is a another retailer, 29. So you can see it, it's significantly higher. If we go to Finviz and we look at Party City, we see the PE at 2. This is the difference between kind of the way um, Fidelity reads it and uh, and Finviz reads it. I would trust the 2. I'd trust Finviz just because I think Fidelity kind of sometimes with their PE is a little bit off. It's not saying that it's wrong. It's just kind of the way that it reads it. Now, you're 89% above your 52-week low of a dollar. You're 78% below your 52-week high, which is $9.29. But you look at this, and God, it's just a falling knife. And again, it's because retail and, and the consumer is just weak. I think it's a great, great uh, uh, kind of move here, Jackson. I, I, I kind of like it, but... For me, being 52 years old, it's probably a little risky for me. Uh, you guys, a lot of my listeners are in their 20s, at least the ones that reach out. Um, and, and Spotify gives me your demographics, so I know there's a, a large amount of you that don't reach out and listen in your 20s. I don't think it's a bad one. It's a meme stock. Are you going to get rich off of this one? I, I wouldn't hold on for a 10 bagger in this. Again, it's not a short squeeze. This is just simply, hey, it's Halloween. Uh, Here's what you have to know about this problem. September is a traditionally weak month. September is just down. Uh, And I showed you that spy chart. September 2021 was down. September 2020 was down. And those were in bull markets. We're in a very clear bear market right now. Uh, The Fed wants to beat this down. Kashikari, uh, Zip Trader Charlie, I was watching his video last night. Kashikari uh, said, hey, the market just has this wrong. We're going to do what needs to be done. The market was like, yeah, if we start to go into the recession, the Fed's going to ease. Well, the September starts what's called, and, and Google this, quantitative tightening. Google it and find out when we did this last. It was with Janet Yellen and the market crashed. Essentially, what the, the Fed does is they start selling off their balance sheet. They start selling off some mortgage-backed securities, they start reducing their balance sheet that it is at an all-time high. As they start selling, buyers need to show up in order just to keep the market where it is. If buyers don't show up and the Fed starts selling, then what happens is the market goes down. So the Fed has this balancing act where they've got to um, uh, sell to reduce their balance sheet, but they can't sell too fast. And the problem is they've got trillions of dollars to actually sell. So not only will they be raising rates, but they will also be selling their mortgage-backed securities. So I, I want to warn you against that because, again, this is had a run from a dollar to two dollars, which is a big, big run. Uh, your timing on this one, uh, while it is Halloween, just may run into a market that just doesn't want any any buy um, any buying. So. Uh, again, we're in a, a bear market. It's a bear market. Make no mistake about it. There is nothing that tells me that, hey, we've all, re- all, re- all of a sudden turn around. Um, earnings are down 3%. By the way, yeah, this is this is another good one. Um, 
earnings estimates are down 3% for next year. Uh, the S&P is not down 3%. Uh, it is down significantly more. Uh, if it stays at 3%, we're probably good. The likelihood of it staying at 3% with inflation is not good. So um, that's crazy. And I have a note in here yesterday afternoon. NVIDIA at 150 could be a buy. Um, one that I like and reports today is Lululemon. And I'm pulling this up on the chart and the algorithm. Uh, you'd be out. And it, it's because it's just been a falling knife. But uh, Lulu is retail. And when you look at this, there is a clear, um, the, the gaps have been filled. Make no mistake about it. This gap right here uh, has been filled. Um, and the gap was in June, uh, May 26th, actually. Uh, it gapped up. That gap was filled with the June, the July low for this. It, it kind of went into July. Um, we, we do have a trading range. Now, what I like about this one is when you pull it back to um, the, the, the volume, when you pull this one back to April 20th, there's a clear volume shelf here at 283, uh, which could be a floor. But I like this almost $300 shelf right here. Your RSI is at 27. This is an oversold stock. Now, here's Here's the danger of this one. And, and I'm not, just to be 100% clear, I'm not buying this one. This is just an idea if you want to take a chance today. Uh, I, personally, I am super patient and I don't want to buy. But if you think that Lululemon is going to post some good earnings, uh, post some, hey, we're not going to have supply chain issues, uh, our earnings look good going forward, you may want to get into this one because it is so oversold. The RSI is at 27. Does that mean it has to come up? Absolutely not. You go back here to May and the RSI was at 22 and it still continued down. So you got some little bounce, but you still continued down. The gap up here um, at uh, 329 to 330, I don't know that that's a gap that's gonna get filled anytime soon. You'd have to have a big turnaround in this one to actually fill that one. Um, but my guess is that, you know, again, I, I, Lululemon is just one of those. I don't think it's a pandemic play. I think people are dressing to go back into the office. I think they probably have a good one. Um, in video, we talked about, a look at, uh, Mosaic, which is a, uh, fertilizer company. This one's been hurt. Uh, it's come back. You're still in this. Ironically, it's funny because see this, and I'm talking to the YouTube audience, see this $45.89 buy-in on the algorithm right there? Well, you've got this clear MACD cross down right here and right around this, uh, the, the, uh, dividend, um, the dividend, uh, uh, X date. So that was yesterday. It looks like, yeah, yesterday. And then you have this MACD cross down yesterday and your RSI is at 34. Does that mean it's gonna go back up? I don't think so. You look at the, I pulled it back here to April 21st where it was at its high. You've kind of pierced this one volume level right here at about 52. Um, if you get below 51, I, I think look out below. Um, but uh, I do think that this is a, a stock that that I've kept an eye on. I just have not pulled the trigger. Uh, I think you know fertilizer companies have had their run. Uh, when you look at Apple, let's look at Apple. Apple again, my big largest position in my uh, portfolio. You got out, and the algorithm was right at 168. Now, did I get out? No. Look at this MACD right here. That MACD is a falling knife. The RSI is at 25. Apple is oversold, make no mistake about it. When we look at the daily on this one, uh, which is where a lot of technicians kind of look, you've pierced the 200 day. You're kind of probably going to use that 50 day as support level, right at 156. There's no volume shelf really below this other than 150, 148 is probably where it's at. If we were to pierce this and close below uh, 156 today, I think that's probably the next level of 148 where you're going. 
There is no catalyst here going forward other than the new iPhones, which are announced next week. Um, yeah, by the way, I'm looking up at the screen. Devon Energy and Occidental below 70, probably going to sell. Um, um, I'll sell into the weakness because I do think that 65, uh, 70 was my uh, pivot point. I should have sold over 70 on both of those. But Apple here, it's an interesting one. It filled a gap on a four hour, on a, um, uh, I think, I forget. TrendSpider had some time level chart, but I forget. Let me see if I can go into Twitter. Um, Cause they did say yesterday. Let's go to TrendSpiders. Trend spider. Do, 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 do. We'll look at them because they did post that there was a gap fill. IWM, Amazon, NVIDIA, tough morning. And by the way, uh, if you want to look at charts, um, Trend Spider has a fantastic Twitter, fantastic um, uh, Instagram, uh, and they're on Facebook. You can kind of see it as well. 13 hours, 12 hours, Amazon, AMD, QQQ, SPY. Yeah, that's yesterday's SPY performance. Apple, gap fills at 157. So you go in here, it's a two-hour chart. See that? Filled it. So what they're saying is that gap on a two-hour chart, uh, it's bouncing right off this moving average line with has got to be the 50. Um, well... You know what? Since I'm a paying customer, let's go to two hour chart on. Uh, we'll go to two hours. Yep, filled that gap and it's the 200 day. So that blue line was a 200 day because mine is red line. 200 day. So on a two hour chart, you've got a clear volume shelf here at 153 uh, if we get down that far. So uh, my guess is, uh, and this was a, I do hold CRM, I hold a small position. Uh, I did not get out. You can clearly see I should have gotten out. Uh, there are gaps all over this one. This one has no support. The RSI is at 22. If I had to guess, it's probably, look at that little move up in the MACD. I'm not going to try and time it. Uh, there's no volume shelf here whatsoever. Uh, if we go back to a daily and look at this daily, um, and we'll pull it back here to the recent highs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you just have no support level whatsoever here. Let's do an auto fib. The next support level is at 123. One, I'm sorry, 146. 146. So uh, you're trading at 154. So CRM, it was voted on in after hours yesterday um, as one of the stocks that's going to be up in uh, September. So... Um, Devin and Oxy, we kind of said it. Devin uh, should have sold. Let's see if you're out on the algorithm with yesterday's downturn. Do, do, do. Nope, you're still in. But see that button hook right there that I talk about? Uh, and I'm pointing it out for the podcast listeners. I'm pointing this out on YouTube. So look at the timestamp and you can go to the YouTube video and look. But that button hook is where you should get out on most of these sales. Look at this. So if I go back to the last one, you had a buy-in here July 7th at 53.21. The algorithm didn't get you out uh, until you had a 0.55% gain. Um, no, I'm sorry. It was a 10% gain, 10.55. So you had a 10.5, but look at this whole way down. Look at this whole way down. Um, Devin, you know, again, here's what I talk about, performance chart. 84% is what the algorithm gets you. Buying and holding makes you 581%. Over here is your wins and losses. 28 positions over 1,000 candles. Remember, we have 1,000 candles right there. I can change that if I wanted to. The average win is 20%. The average loss is 5%. You had 10 wins and 18 losses of those 28. Now, if we go and we look at Oxy, uh, it's probably the same exact thing. These kind of trade on the same. You had a buy in here at August 11th. Look at that little dovetail right there. Look at that button hook. Uh, it, it literally just comes back to a button hook and it will probably get out today, um, today or tomorrow. See that MACD is crossing down. When that MACD crosses down, typically it's, it's, it's moving down. So you can almost pre plan uh, when the algorithm is going to get you out. Uh, but I would say 70 is probably a uh, a good one. Um, 
a good pivot point on this. Sell it over 70, but buy it under 70. Because again, I think I think this goes up uh, just because of energy. And I'm not going to go over LNG st uh, stocks. I still have Tom stock to go over. Uh, but uh, 182 is kind of the price of 173. CrowdStrike got killed. A and remember, I went over it yesterday. CrowdStrike, go into Finviz. You can see it's not making money. It doesn't have a PE. The forward PE is 102. Go to Pan W. So if I had to choose um, cybersecurity stocks, forward PE is 49 on Pan W. So you're actually buying it cheaper. Um, that's a good example. Um, so let's go over Tom's. Tom's uh, strongly suggest a quick peek at GLS, DAC, and VGS. Let's look at uh, GLS. GLS is Gelesis Holdings. Um, yeah, the algorithm has you buying in at 120. It's at 121. That RSI is kind of in no man's land. Uh, the volume shelf here is kind of up. Uh, I don't know that I'd necessarily recommend this one from a technical standpoint. So if Tom has some some other stuff in there. Uh, DAC, we've talked about the shipper. Um, DAC, I think that's a falling. Yeah, it's been falling. Uh, it did get you in yesterday at 69.65. So uh, you do have an RSI here at 45. You've got a MACD cross up uh, right here. And um, you know, you're at 68. So it's under where the actual algorithm got you in. 69.65 is the buy-in. Hasn't gotten you out. The MACD hasn't crossed under. So even though today's down market, you know, DAC might be one that you want to look at. Those volume level shelves, eh, I'm not crazy about it. There's nothing that's telling me that I've got to get in this because, again, I'm kind of being patient just because September is such a bad month historically. Um NVGS, which is Navigator Holdings. This one has you buying in at 1170, 1174 and you're only at 1184. I don't think that this, you know, your max. Yeah, I am still live. Um, there's nobody watching, but I, I think you guys will watch on the, the replay. Um, 1174, yeah, I, I don't know that one. Um, I may be wrong. Big place this week. TNP, STNG, ASC. Um, OSG looks good too. I'm not going to look at all of these. CHRD, I think he's had some luck with CHRD. Um, this is um, a merger of Oasis and Whitting in July. It got It's an energy play. This is an energy stock. And great stock. Look at that. July 8th, it had a MACD cross up of 109. You're still in that trade, but it's got that button hook. I wouldn't necessarily get into this one because of that button hook. Energy's kind of, it's playing this 200 day right here. Um, you know, the RSI's in no man's land of 47. What makes me think that this run isn't just going to lead to more downturn and maybe down here at 134 at the 50 day? It could even go down to 128 at this uh, volume level shelf right here. Um, there's a there's a lot of different um, ways that this could go. Let's pull this back here to the highs. Um, yeah, there's a very clear volume shelf here at 134. Uh, if we don't, if we break through that one, you probably would have to break through 128, and then you'd get down to 114. And is that unheard of in this stock? No. Um, you know, it, again, you look at look at the competitors on this one, but it's a great trade if you're in it. I probably would take some profits on that one uh, just because energy is, is, is kind of a bad one too. Um, how to invest uh, Masters of the Craft. Oil down. By the way, oil is down again. And you, you, we went over Devon and uh, Oxy. Uh, it's down again based on worldwide fears of a recession. Um, recessions push demand down. China's also locked down. Shenzhen which is China's largest city, which is app where Apple makes their iPhone, which is the new one is coming out. They've already shifted some of the iPhone um, assembly to uh, to India. And that's been all over the news. But Shenzhen is in lockdown. Uh, that's 40 million people somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and we talked about the U.S. government restricting. Um, by the way, if you, if you think my rant on um, Pelosi was bad, 
Uh, I've got a rant in my notes about Rick Perry, uh, who is the former Secretary of Energy um, under Trump. What a douche this guy was on CNBC this morning, completely rewriting history about his uh, his uh, policy on um, uh, European energy and the Americans supporting European energy. What a douche that guy was. Um, and it was specifically, I, I don't know what his uh, past interviews were like, but this one, thank goodness for the anchors on CNBC calling him out. He just looked like a douche. Um, GOGL. Tom didn't mention that one, but that's one that I've, I've been in before. Uh, I noticed that it had this turn down, but it's had this run up from um, 931. It is under t- still under $10. Uh, it, it was interesting. I saw it. Uh, let's look at SARK and look at, let's look at some of these shorts because, again, September is a, a traditionally bad month. You'd still be in SARK. Uh, it is oversold. With the RSI at 71, overbought, I mean, <clears throat> RSI is at 71. The MACD is scrolling up here. 47.45 was the buy in. You're at 60 now. 59.20 is where you're trading. Crazy, crazy run. Uh, SQQQQ, uh, another triple levered short on the NASDAQ. You had a buy in here on August 16th at 33. You're at $47 right now. Crazy crazy good trade. Um, you know, again, there, there are plays, ways to make money in, in this market. Uh, SPXU, let's look at this one. Um, this is a ultra pro. So it's triple levered on the uh, S&P. $13.73 buy in August 18th. $17 stock right now. What's that? $4? That's 30, 40%. Uh, great move. And you still have confirmation. Again, September's a weak month. Uh, even though it's oversold, the RSI is at a crazy 76. The MACD has no sign of pulling back. There's no button hook on this one. Um, the, the volume level support would be back at 15. So uh, I, you know, again, I'm not necessarily getting into these. It's just a way to look up uh, a way. Let's say Tesla Q. Um, uh, uh, I forget what. Let me see the short. I'm going to Google Tesla short ETF. Um, it is to do, do inverse Tesla ETFs highlights new waves of trading. Um, the single stocks that have paired ETFs are Tesla, NVIDIA. Um, there we go. TSLQ, NVDS. So NVIDIA, NVDS. Let's look at NVDS today. Uh, NVIDIA is down 7% at one, th- it pierced 140. Um, wow. That, that's just, but look at NVDS up 10%. NVDS is the one. Um, TSLQ. Let's look at that one. And none of these have enough. Uh, I'll show you in trend spider, but none of them have any moving averages cause they're all new. Um, this one, uh, TSLQ shorts Tesla. It's up 1%. PYPS, um, if I can type. Uh, yeah, PYPS, um, that one is up 2%. That shorts PayPal. Uh, NKEQ, ugh. let's look at NKEQ, is, and eh, it's flat, shorts Nike. Uh, AXS, PFES. I don't even know what that is. Um, yeah, I'm, that's not trading as, as well. But um, if you want to go, just Google uh, short ETFs, single stock ETFs, and you can find that. Um, oh, by the way, at 8.30 today, labor market results were, uh, part of the reason these stocks are down is because the labor market is strong. Right now, the NASDAQ, the Dow is down 0.63. NASDAQ is down 1.22%. And the S&P is down 0.8%. The VIX is up 4% to 26. Like I said, the VIX wants to go to 30. That would be your UVIXI, which is up today 4%. Um, 
I don't buy it because I just don't buy those invert those uh, depreciating assets and hold on to them. Zephin from Instagram. Uh, by the way, oh, before I do that, Twitter is uh, testing an edit button. So those guys that follow me on Twitter, testing an edit button. Um, Zephin from Instagram was listening to Rich Dad uh, Pod Radio. Rich Dad Radio, I think is what it's called. Um, great podcast, completely recommend it. Um, it, it is, a, you know, uh, if you guys are new to investing, add that one. Uh, my First Millions is my uh, favorite podcast. Um, Rich Dad Radio is a great one too. There was a guest on there and this is what Zephin wrote to me. $600 trillion in financial assets globally, seven times the GDP at $95 trillion. Normally, financial assets are a premium two to three times. So the biggest bubble in the world uh, are all fin- fin- financial assets right now, even bonds. And when you have a crash that, that is coming, and this guy's, again, talking about a crash, and financial assets begin to crumble, the money has to go somewhere. The money goes into the safest area. So it goes to income producing assets like real estate, multifamily real estate, and treasury bonds. Look at 2008 and 2008 crisis. Things went down. Financial assets go up. Flirting with inflation and the money has to go somewhere. The highest quality bond in real estate, nothing is going to beat a 30-year treasury. Uh, In 2008, treasury bonds went up 45% and they will go up even more this time. ZROZ. ZROZ, which is a PIMCO 25-year U.S. Treasury bond fund. Look at the algorithm. You're in at 105. You're trading at 101. Uh, That is on my algorithm. Let's go to a weekly chart because we can look at 2008. Um, I think in a weekly, we might have to go to monthly to go that far back. Um, 2012, yeah, we're going to have to go monthly. Uh, To go that far back, you just can't do a ton of candlesticks. So look at 2008 here. I'm going to pull this back even further. Um, Oh, will it not let me? No more data. So it doesn't even have 2008. Um, Let's see, zero Z. Let's put it into um, Active Trader Pro. And we'll go max. And it's going to monthly. This goes, yeah, it only goes back to 2010. So you can't really look at this um, from a monthly standpoint and you can't go back there. Um, But I will go to, we'll look at this monthly. So you can see 2010, uh, it kind of starts here. It doesn't have any kind of data from an RSI standpoint. But right now this ZROC, 25 year, zero coupon US Treasury is trading next to nothing. I mean, it's just on a downward trend for the entire year. So do I think this is going to go up? I think at some point it does because that RSI is at 29. From a monthly standpoint, you probably wouldn't be bad in in investing in this. The problem is you just don't have enough uh, upward movement in bonds to say, yeah, look look at even this movement in 2000, you know, even during the bull market. It's just not going up that much. Um, let's look at another one, uh, TLT, which is one that I've looked at in the past. Uh, this will open on a uh, four-hour chart. It's going to run the algorithm. You're in, but there's gaps down here. And you look at a monthly chart of this. Let's see if we can go back to 2008 on this one because this one's a long hauler. Yeah, we can go back to 2008. Look at 2008. It went from about, say, 90 up to 122. So TLT was a good investment then. If you held it all the way here, look at this. If you held it from 2008 until today, you're at the same level. So you do get, let me see, what's the dividend on TLT? Uh, You get a 3%, 2.26% 2. dividend. So for all these years, you've made 2%. It's fantastic, isn't it? Considering inflation runs at 2%, you're really not making any money. Now, TLT, I believe, is tax-free um, because it's U.S. Treasuries. But look, there's no way I'm getting into this one with that MACD that far down. Uh, the RSI is at 28. Bonds just don't hold anything. So do I think that you'll go up here? Now, uh, let's look at a stock. And, and since we, again, you see this in 2008. As the, the crisis happens, 
you see it go up. As the crisis um, resolves, it goes down. And then we see a bounce up, and then you see a bounce down, and you see a huge bounce up here in 2011. Um, again, this is a monthly chart. But let's take something like Bank of America that I traded back in 2008. And let's go back to a monthly. And we'll look at a Bank of America. Look at Bank of America in 2008. Uh, you had it sliding down here. I think I bought this at about $5. And I think I bought it in probably December 2008 when Buffett did. Um, no, yeah, I must have bought it here in January 2009. Um, it was about $5. Uh, I held on to that probably till here. Uh, even if you bought that at $5 and you held on to it, remember, if you bought TLT, Back in 2009, you wouldn't have made any money because you would have had the same thing. Bank of America is paying you a dividend. Let's look at the dividend yield uh, of 2.62, which is the same as a treasury yield. And you go all the way up here to $33 from $5. So not only have you gotten a 2% dividend a long way, you've six times your money. So what I'm saying about this guy saying, hey, it's it's... You know, put your money into treasury bonds because it's going to make money. It's never a guarantee. Treasury bonds are significantly safe. And yes, they pay you a dividend. But there is still some risk in that you're giving up capital dollars where in, in the uh, public markets with stocks, you could make money. Let's even just look at SPY, which pays you, I think, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of a um, 3% dividend or something like that. Uh, let's look at SPY and let's go back to the monthly. So you just have your uh, your money sitting in SPY and you go through the 2008 downturn, November 2008, and you say, okay, I'm going to buy more here at 82. Um, okay. You know, let's look at SPY on, on here. Let's look at on, on Finviz. Dividend is 1.52. So it's 1% less um, than Bank of America. It's 1% less than uh, than uh, TLT. But look, you bought it at 80 in 2000, say, you know, 2008. Say you even bought it at 146 in 2008. January 2008 at its high before the real downturn. You bought it at its high. You've still more than doubled your money while collecting a 1.5% dividend. Now, remember, look, look look why I wouldn't buy a SPY on this downturn right here. That MACD is still down. Let's go to the daily and let's look at the MACD on that one. Well, we'll go to the weekly first. We'll go to a weekly. That MACD is responding a little bit better. See the January, the, the July uptick? You had a crossover. Uh, let's look at a daily. And if we go to a daily, uh, that MACD is crossing down. It crossed up, but it's crossing down. So why am I so patient in this market? Just because I don't think there's a lot of buyers showing up. Now, let's talk about, uh, how long have I been doing this? Yeah, 51 minutes. Let's talk about the scans. Uh, the one scan that I noticed was Roku. And it's interesting because I have a Roku sitting here in the background. If I could turn around my camera, I would. Uh, but uh, you had a MACD cross up here at 67.98. You're trading at 65. Uh, the RSI is at 33. At some point, uh, buyers have to show up. You look at the last time it got down this low. Uh, it was down here in the 60s. It bounced up to about 80. Do I think that that's going to happen? Roku's got some real problems. I don't think they're making money. Uh, ARK has been the buyer. Yeah, they're not making money. Uh, ARK has been the buyer of this stock. Look at that stock chart on Finviz. Go to finviz.com and type in Roku. You can clearly see even their trend lines are pointing down. And it's right in the middle of the current trend line. So do I think that this one's going up? It's probably a decent gamble, and here's why. The algorithm loses you 46%. The buying and holding loses you 59%. The average win is 10%. You had 32 positions, 10 wins, 22 losses. Um, you know, Again, do I think that this could be a win? I think you could get from 67 to say, um, you know, what's it, it's 74, 
74 is your 10% move. And that's what we're gaming for is 67 to 74. It's oversold. Again, remember these bounces happen quick. Um, let's look at Cleveland Cliffs because that was one that I got people into. At 19, you're down at 16 now. Oof, bad trade. And I told you, you got out. But again, Cleveland Cliffs is one of those stocks. If you have a tax event, you can take it, take the loss and you have some stop losses here. Stop loss should have been at 5% because your average loss is 6.68%. You could have saved yourself 1%. Your average win is 15.9%. You are out of that trade. So you should have had a stop loss and it got you out at 9%. So even if you didn't have a stop loss and you held on, take your 10% loss, move on. But you gap down here. That gap down today uh, means that that gap up is going to get filled at some point. And it's going to get filled quick. You probably are coming down here to fill this gap between 1532 and 15. Uh, that's probably where we're going. There's a volume shelf here at 1563. Uh, that might be a bounce up. It might not fill this whole gap. But I led you guys in wrong. This is, you know, again, uh, my apologies on this one. This is another April Shopify, uh, but this one turned around pretty quickly. Uh, but I, I just showed you why I'm not necessarily buying into this market. SDGR, Schrodinger, uh, what is it? SD, SGDR, uh, SDGR, SDGR, Schrodinger. Uh, this is SDGR. Let's look at Finviz. It's an ARC holding. Uh, and the reason why I bring it up is it does have a cross up. It is not making money. Um, Schrodinger, together with his subsidiaries, provides physics-based software platform that enables discovery of novel molecules for drug development and materials applications. The company operates in two segments, software and drug discovery. The software segment is focused on selling its software for drug discovery. So it's clearly an ARKG uh, holding. It had a cross up here at 2744. The chart is so uncertain in this one. The reason why I bring this up is because it does seem to be crossing up at a bottom here. It's at 2690 today. The RSI is at 33. Could it go down from here? Yes. This is why I like it. The average win is 18%. You've only had seven wins, 29 positions, seven wins, 22 losses. Your average loss is 7%. So if you buy in here, I want your stop loss to be at 5%. I don't care if you hit that stop loss. You sell. Even if you think that, oh, I'm just going to hold on to it. Put your stop loss in at 5%. This market is too volatile to sit there and hold it. Um, so those were my two scans. I think I'm going to stop this at an hour. Um, there's some other things that I had like energy stocks. Um uh, there were, you know, Kramer went over th four energy stocks last night that I, I should go over these because I do like them. Uh, let's go over this. This is liquid natural gas, um, TLL. This is a, um, a, a natural gas company. They don't have a MACD cross up. You'd be out on this one right now. Um, there's a clear volume shelf here at about 375. You're at 390 right now. Uh, your algorithm gives you 401% gain versus a 348% uh, gain if you buy and hold. There are 12 wins and 17 losses. Your average win is 36%. Your average loss is 8%. The reason is because natural gas has been going crazy. And, and you see this one, the reason your average win is up is because February 1st, you had a buy-in at $2.52. Uh, the algorithm got you out April 22nd with a 107% gain. That is why you've had, and again, with energy, June, the, the June energy lows, it got you in at $3.21. It got you out um, August 3rd with an 11% gain. Uh, you just had one. The buy-in was August 10th at $3.65. It got you out with a 1% gain, but you could have gotten out with 30% gain. Uh, again, it just kind of the dovetail kind of takes that one over. Um, so TLLL is one. SRE. And one thing Jim Cramer does know is he does know long-term investing. Um, SRE, you're not in. I went over this one yesterday uh, before he even brought it up. Um, this is Sempra. 
And this is a utility company in California and Texas. And they do have some um, a pipeline down to Mexico as well. They could sell some of their natural gas. Um, so SRE, you'd be out with an 11% gain. There's there's no in right now. The, the MACD is going down. The RSI is crossing down. You have a clear volume shelf at 152. It's trading at 164 right now. The volume level shelf that I actually like is 160. And that's where the 200 day is. And the last time it hit the 200 day, it bounced off the 200 day. I think with SRE and other natural gas utility providers, I think you could use that that 200 day. Put in an order at 160. Um, you know, put in a a your average loss is 2% on this one. So put in a 2% stop loss. If you lose 2%, big deal. You can always buy back into this one. Uh, but SRE is a good one. EE is the next one. And we did have a cross up, I think, here. Cross down, sorry, when I was scanning on cross downs. Um, no, we it, we're about to get a cross down. That's what it was. 21.15 on July 6th was your buy-in here. You're at $26, $25.15 right now. Clear volume shelf here at about $23, which is where I would say to buy this one. EE. I think $23 is your buy-in purchase here. Again, it's, it, this is a natural gas company. Um, it came public in April. It owns sh ships that import LNG. So they store and ship LNG. You're going to need that for Europe. Um, ENB, a Canadian natural gas pipeline. Uh, Enbridge. I've talked about this one before. Uh, it's a falling, falling knife right now. Um, you're at $40. Uh, the RSI is at $27. The, the MACD is still just crossing down. There is no reason to necessarily own this one right now. But I do think that the lows of 30, if you cross 40 and go into the 30s, I think a 30 handle on this one is probably pretty good. You know, again, I don't know, you know, necessarily if this one's going to fall down. This is just based on these charts. Uh, Kramer is saying, hey, you can buy these for the long term and you can buy them assuming that natural gas. Remember, we're dealing with a supply issue of natural gas in Europe and all around the world. If Russia cuts off that pipeline to um, uh, the, the Nord Stream pipeline, if they cut it off and make no mistake about it, he will cut it off. It's down now for three days uh, for unscheduled maintenance. That's what he's going to do. He's just going to cut it off and, and nobody can stop him. You know, Europe has kind of pinned themselves in here. Natural gas is the way they make energy. Uh, they wanted clean energy. They have clean energy. The problem is they need it from other places. So, uh, and, you know, all of these four, um, T-E-L-L, uh, L-N-G, by the way, which is Chenier. He also mentioned Chenier. We all know Chenier because I've said this one. Um, Chenier got you out yesterday with a 25% gain. And it's clear the uh, this is going to use the 200-day at 140. The volume shelf here at about 150, probably 147 to 150. It's probably where it's coming back to. But then it's going to shoot back up. You know, again, we're going to have a, a, a natural gas price increase. So Moderna, we talked about Moderna, speaking of uh, something that's going to be in the news. Um, they just had uh, the U.S. government buy their Omicron uh, booster. So you're going to hear start to hear a lot of uh, uh, COVID stuff in the news. You'll see a pop in this one. Right now, you don't have a MACD cross up. Let's see when this one crosses up. Uh, it's about to, maybe today. You might have a MACD cross up today on this one. I'll keep this one in my... Uh, in my portfolio, in not in my portfolio, on my watch list. The RSI is at 30. Last time it was at 30 was June 13th, and it rose from 130. And if you had held it, again, hindsight is 2020, but if you would have held it, you would have gone to do about 200, um, which is a 50% increase, 15% gain. So Again, you've got opportunities in here. I would say, you know, look at those, those, do your homework, look at the spy charts. I think this is a perfect first episode for YouTube. Go and watch the charts that I just looked at. Go and look at them. They're fantastic. You can uh, see why I'm trying to be patient on this, uh, this market. Okay. Hour and three minutes. 
Take care. Have fun. I'm going to post this one on YouTube. Uh, I'll have some closing remarks on YouTube. So if you uh, listen to the end of this, go to YouTube and go to the end. Tell me the secret word that I'm going to say. I'm going to stop recording now on the podcast. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Thank you to the supporters of the podcast. Thank you to everybody who listens. I really, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, reach out to me on Instagram. Reach out to me on Twitter. Have a great day. Okay. We just stopped that. We'll export song to disc. And then I save this. Now. Oh, okay. So now I'm just on YouTube. Just live streaming on YouTube. Um, I will tell you. The secret word is hamburger. (laughs) And with that, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, You guys can see there were only four people that actually viewed. Hopefully we'll get those views up because I do think that there's some value here. So uh, talk to you tomorrow.